New York bagels are one of my favorite things to eat in the entire world. And um, I want to talk a little bit about the history of them. Not for too long. We won't bore you. We'll get to the debate part soon. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of New York bagels. Then Kat's going to talk a little bit about the history of Montreal bagels. And then we're going to kind of talk about the differences between the two um, structurally, and we're going to make them, and then we're going to open it up for whatever you guys want to say. So if you have pressing thoughts, feel free to share them in the comments um, in the meantime, and then at the end, we'll open it up um, for more of a debate. So in America and across the world, if you think of a bagel, you're thinking about a New York bagel, right? Like New York bagels have basically become the or the er bagel, like the bagel that we think of. Um, and when you think of a New York bagel, you really have to go back to Poland. Um, and I think that's true of Montreal bagels as well, but Kat will um, talk about that more. Um, Polish Jews brought, hold on a second. Can you guys, can you guys stop talking? Thank you. <laughs> my, kid, my kid is eight and a half. He's too old. He should know better. Um, so New York bagels came to, uh, sorry, Bagels came to New York from Poland in the late 19th and early 20th century, um, and they were brought by Polish Jews. And for a couple of decades, they were really a Jewish thing, and not just a Jewish thing, but a Jewish New York thing specifically. Um, but they were very, very big here. And in 1907, there were something like 300 bagel bakers in New York City, which is a lot. Um, it would grow beyond that. But by 1907, there were already 300, and that was enough to establish a union. Um, so there was a bagel making union. Um, and it was a very sort of exclusive club, like to be part of this bagel bakers club. And there were a lot of secrets that were passed on about how to make bagels properly. They were, of course, all hand rolled. They were um, boiled, they, you know, which is the, the real key to making a bagel a bagel and not just a roll with a hole. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and it was just sort of like a, a craft almost, like an artisan craft. Um, and it wasn't, oh, I will also say New York bagels traditionally were on the small side. They were like three to four ounce um, ounces of dough. And today, if you go to a regular like bagel shop in New York, you're probably looking at like a six to eight ounce bagel. So they're like, You've all seen like the big puffy ones that you could sleep on. They're so big. Um, that's kind of what the New York bagel has become. But originally they were small and um, chewy. And that's that's kind of how I make them. Um, by the 1950s, the bagel started to kind of have a crossover into Main Street. The New York bagel kind of became more of an American thing. But as late as 1956, the New York Times, um, when mentioning bagels, still had to kind of have a parentheses description of, of a bagel um, because it wasn't a commonly known um, food item yet. So they actually described it as a donut with rigor mortis, <laughs> which is a lovely, um, <laughs> a lovely thought. Um, I've also seen them as like rolls made of cement. Like there were a lot of different ways um, that they were defined. Um, and in the 1960s, you started to see the automated bagel, a machine, a machine that could make the bagel. And that's when everything kind of changed. Um, the, ba the bagel machine was actually uh, created by a guy named Dan Thompson, who was a Canadian bagel, bagel maker. Um, and so part of me wonders <laughs> if there was a little bit of sabotage going on because <laughs> the bagel machine ruined the New York bagel. Um, no longer were they exclusive and there was no like no insiders club to making them. All of a sudden they kind of became the, you know, think of a lender's bagel in your freezer section. It's bread. It's fine, but it's not really a New York bagel. Um, so I, you know, it kind of tarnished the reputation of uh, what a New York bagel can be. Um, there are still many places to get a good, authentic New York bagel in New York, but there's also a lot of dreck. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. before I pass it on to Kat, and I know she has some really fascinating, um, history to share about bagels in Montreal. I just want to define a New York bagel as I understand it. Um, people on here, people who've been New Yorkers for much longer than I have may, may have addendums or tweaks to my definition, but this is kind of how I think of a New York bagel. 
Um, the first is that it's made out of a lean dough. Um, and by lean, I mean, it's not enriched with eggs. It's not enriched with oil. Um, it's basically flour, yeast, salt, water, like pizza crust. Um, it does have a little bit of barley malt syrup, which is a um, syrup made out of literally like a byproduct of barley um, that gives it a little bit of that like molassesy flavor, but but just a hint. Um, it is not a sweet pastry or a, a baked good. It's decidedly on the not either like neutral or skewing salty. Um, it is. 100% of the time, a real New York bagel is boiled before it is baked. And there's a reason for that. The reason is um, when you are creating something like challah, like challah bread, you want the yeast to do its full magic to kind of puff up the, the loaves and make them tender and soft throughout. But when you're making a bagel, similar to a pretzel, if you boil um, the bagel first, it kills the yeast on the surface of the bagel. And that kind of retards or slows down the um, the the like rising process in the oven just on the surface. And so that's why you kind of end up with this sort of um, shiny, chewy, um, snappy crust. And then inside where the yeast is still alive, um, you get a tender kind of tender center. Um, Two other kind of things that make a New York bagel to me. One is that it's fired in, I guess, traditionally a coal oven. Um, now you, uh, electric uh, electric is fine too, but that's different than Montreal. And I'll let Kat explain what they do in Montreal. Um, and the last thing I would say is that a New York bagel is, um, I mean, in, New in America, like I grew up in Chicago and my favorite bagel was a chocolate chip bagel, which I feel like is an abomination, but I still love it and would still eat one uh, with butter any day. Um, but in New York, you are going to have um, a plain bagel, a sesame bagel, a poppy seed bagel, a salt bagel, um, an onion bagel, or an everything bagel, which is all those things together. And there's a wonderful story about how um, everything bagel mix became a thing when a New York baker in the 1980s was sweeping up his floor at the end of the day and saw all of the seeds together on the floor and was like, hmm, what if I just put those all together onto the bagel? I don't know if that's true, but I love that story, so I always share it. Um, so that is the New York bagel. A good New York bagel is just like pure ambrosia. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm going to hand it over to Kat to talk about Montreal. Thanks, Leah. Um, honestly, your description, you're making me want a good salt New York bagel. Yeah, you don't get that in Montreal. We don't get salt bagels here. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> right. So in Montreal, um, bagels have become the one of the iconic foods of our city, along with smoked meat and poutine. So for people who don't know, poutine is fries with gravy and cheese curds on it. Mm. Um, great late at night <laughs> after you've had a few drinks with friends. Um, and I think that's the only time it should be eaten. <laughs> um, <laughs> but they've really gone beyond um, their roots, which similarly to New York bagels were brought over um, by Jews um, from Poland. I know the, Saint, the, um, the owner or the founder of one of the original bagel bakeries here was from Latvia, but it is from that corner of the world. And they were brought over again, similarly to New York in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, when you come to Montreal today, the there are two iconic bagel shops that are located in the Mile End, um, also known as like the Plat, which is part of the Plateau Mont Royal. Um, and it's, it's, uh, and so, those are the iconic bagel shops that you will go to to try a, Mon a Montreal bagel. You can get bagels at other shops around the city, but those really are the, the oldest and, in my opinion, the best. Um, but the first bagel shop in the city was actually located on St. Lawrence Boulevard, or St. Laurent Boulevard, as it's known today. Um, and Saint Laurent Boulevard um, was known as the Immigrant Corridor. It's the, it's the street that divides Montreal between East and West. Um, 
and with the eastern part of the city being traditionally francophone and the western part of the city being traditionally anglophone and so when jews um, settled in montreal they settled a, the, on the streets around um, boulevard saint laurent um, or saint lawrence in the plateau montreal so that you had this really densely populated neighborhood of eastern european um, Ashkenazi Yiddish speaking Jews. It was really like a working class neighborhood. And along St. Lawrence Boulevard, you had many, many food stores and shops that catered to the community. And, um, and so the first bagel shop for anyone who knows the city was located just um, a little south of Schwartz's. So it's, and it's, um, it used to be a butcher shop. It's now that butcher shop is closed. So this building is not being used anymore. Um, and the two founders of this bagel shop um, were Isidore Schlafman and Hyman Seligman. There was a third partner, but he's really not we don't know too much about his involvement, his um, his part in like Montreal bagel history. So it's really Isidore Schlafman and Hyman Seligman. And so they founded the Montreal bagel shop um, in around 1932, some people say earlier, um, but they were supplying bagels um, to Montreal. There's stories that I've, I've spoken to Hyman Seligman Seligman's granddaughter, and she remembers delivering bagels around the city with him and even putting them on trains to be delivered to Ontario and even Edmonton. So, you know, they really had to toast the bagel by the time they got all the way out there. Um, and and the, for her, like the, the car, his car always smelled of bagels, even if there were none in it, because they were really, he was doing all the deliveries with this car. And at this shop, they were selling um, sesame bagels and poppy seed bagels. And I think what's fun too is she, she described to me how they would sell a dozen on a string rather than in a bag. Um, and so they would ha sometimes have them hanging around the shop waiting for people to come uh, buy them. Uh, then as the community moved up Boulevard or St. Lawrence Boulevard and into the Mile End, the two partners decided to move along with the community and they opened up a bagel shop together in the building where Fairmount Bagels is located today on Fairmount Street, a few doors down from Walensky's. This is for all my Montrealers or Canadians, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, and it's, it's so it's this little street with like really two iconic um, Jewish businesses on it. Um, and they opened up a bagel shop there, but because of disagreements between um, the Schlafmans and Hyman Seligman. Seligman ended up leaving and went on to found St. Vieter Bagels. And this was in the early 50s at this time. So in around 51. Um, Wait, Kat, so are now, you telling me, are you telling me there was a, a food, a, a, a feud between two Jewish food people? I can't believe it. I right? Can't believe Shocking? It. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Never expected. That. Never, never. <laughs> <laughs> and so Hyman Seligman went on to open St. Peter. Um, he ultimately took on an apprentice, Mara Lefkowitz, who's really known as the founder of St. Peter these days. He ultimately took on another apprentice, Joe Morena, who um, was an Italian boy growing up in the Mile End, because as like the Mile End was another neighborhood where many Im immigrants settled and you had a big Italian population there at one point. And so he earned the nickname Yosef because he spoke a little bit of Yiddish from working at the bagel shop mm -hmm. and still owns um, St. Vieter today with his sons. And that really speaks to me because I'm half Italian. So I, I just, I love, I love this St. Vieter story. Um, and Fairmount um, stayed open. It closed for about 10 years and then reopened. The story goes that um, Isidore's son, Jack, was driving around um, or and he came across the building. He was driving around in a taxi and he was a taxi driver and he was dr like driving his taxi, saw the building was for sale and decided to buy it and reopen the bagel shop. And the story goes is that there was a 
you know, 10 year old bagel in the ashes of the oven. Um, <laughs> and, and so from then onwards, from 79 onwards, we've had these two bagel shops located blocks away from each other in the mile end. And if you talk to any Montrealer, they will have a favorite bagel. Um, usually it's a Saint, you know, your team St. Peter or team Fairmount. I'm sure there are other favorite bagel shops among Montrealers on, on here this evening. Um, but, uh, you know, there, there's a side that you always pick. Um, and I think it really has to do with like either proximity, the first bagel you tasted when you moved to the city or like what you grew up eating um, when you were a kid and where your family went. Um, and bagels in Montreal, I'll just take a second to describe what they are and what they're like. So unlike New York bagels, these are made with an enriched dough. You have an egg in the dough as well as oil um, and usually malt syrup. But in the recipe that I created, we, um, as a nod to Quebec, we added in some maple syrup. Um, and after when they're boiled, again, you know, a bagel Without being boiled, it's not a bagel, but we boil it um, in honey water. And so the honey really, um, what happens is it crystallizes as it's, um, like once the honey is on the bagel after it's being boiled, when you bake it, it crystallizes and forms like a, I guess not a crunchy crust, but like, as, like New York bagels have a snappy crust. Montreal bagels have a crisper crust, I would say. Um, and, and they have a bigger hole than New York bagels. So we don't really, there are some places in Montreal, like Beauties, um, that make a bagel sandwich, but it's not really how we eat our bagels in the city because of that bigger hole. All right, so that was my Montreal bagel spiel. Kat, <laughs> <laughs> um, can yeah. you just also talk about um, the difference between the toppings, like how they're topped? Oh, right. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Yes. Um, we are the the bagels that you you find at um, St. Vieter or Fairmount that the oh and a, sorry okay I missed two things two things the one of the I think one of the really important steps of a Montreal bagel is how it's baked and it is baked in a wood fired oven um, and that is really what I think creates that beautiful crust on a bagel um, and is is a defining element of Montreal bagels. Um, and in regards to toppings, um, we're pretty, we're traditionalists. Um, the, the bagels that you'll find uh, at each bagel shop that are the freshest are sesame seed bagels and poppy seed bagels, white seed and black seed. Um, you, they make other flavors like, you know, everything bagel and, um, or everything. And like St. Peter has a rosemary bagel. Um, they even have pumpernickel bagels, but those are not made fresh like throughout the day in the same way that sesame, that, uh, sesame seeds and poppy seeds are. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the prompt. <laughs> <laughs> totally. So um, I guess what, if you're good, Leah, we'll um, start demoing and showing people how to make our, the bagels. Yeah, we. Um... Hey, Kat, I just want to interrupt for one second to let you know that I think um, your phone might have turned off or oh, no. went offline. So before before you get too far into, it, I just want you to be able to get your phone back online. Okay. Well, well, Kat, there we go. That. Oh, great. I was just going to say the way we're going to do it, um, the process of making a Montreal bagel and a New York bagel is fairly similar in that you roll, boil, and bake. Um, so we're going to split it up so that. Kat shows the rolling step and I'll show the boiling, uh, boiling step, but I still don't see Kat. I don't see your hands. Is that, are they not spotlit, Shannon? Um, it might not be spotlit. Second. Yeah, I'm, there we go. Um, there we go. Oh, perfect. Okay. okay. And, and for the person who just asked about recipes, I will share the link of our PDF of Kat and Leah's recipes in the chat for everyone. Um, but it should have been in the email and we'll go out on the email that was that sends that we send out after the event as well. Okay, I will shut up now. <laughs> Not at all. All right, so I um, I'm going to start rolling some bagels. Um, I'm just going to divide this up 
by sight, but when I was making them last night, um, I weighed the dough and then weighed each bagel. So they all looked uniform and really nice um, because I pre we pre-made some bagels, um, but you can also just totally um, eyeball this. So I have my, um, my bagel dough and I like to um, like take my dough, turn it out and it, and just as a note, you don't need to flour your surface here because you're going to want that the friction that an unfloured surface offers um, when you're rolling your bagel. So you turn out your dough. I like to shape it into like a kind of rectangle because when I'm all eyeballing this, I think it helps to make bagels that are a little more um, even and like the same size. So I'm going to start by dividing it, dividing my dough in half. And this recipe and I, my recipe, and I'm, I think Leah's correct me if I'm wrong, but it makes a dozen bagels. So does yours make a dozen bagels? So it does make a dozen bagels, but it makes a dozen of the, the old fashioned small New York bagels. So if you want them to be bigger, like a more what you would find today, you can make like nine or eight or 10 or whatever. Um, and then you'll get bigger bagels. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so my ours, um, well, this recipe makes 12 um, Montreal size bagels, which I think are, are smaller, I think smaller than New York bagels nowadays, but maybe slightly bigger than um, the, old the 12 bagels. Yeah, the old yeah. fashioned ones, exactly. Um, and so I'm just, I'm going to divide this half into six strips or six pieces rather. Uh, okay. I'm going to try to do this somewhat evenly. Um, okay, there we go. So I'm just using a bench scraper to cut this. You can use a, a chef's knife to do this. All right, and I'm going to take one strip of dough and I'm going to roll it into um, about an eight inch um rope when you go into the bagel shops whether it's St. Vieter or Fairmount you can see the the it's usually men um working behind the counter rolling the bagels and they are so adept at it and so quick and they roll perfect bagels it's it's so impressive if you and they're like using both hands at the same time right they're like <laughs> yes <laughs> and they're like folding it around and it, it's really something to see. So if, when you come to Montreal, if you come, make sure to go into a bagel shop and, and have a look at that. I am not as adept as they are, but <laughs> I will do my best. It feels um, like being a pizza maker, like, you know, you know how to flip the, the dough. Exactly, yeah. I, I'm unfortunately not there yet. <laughs> uh, um, so I, oh, I think my camera froze. I'm gonna wait second yeah it does look like it froze um up try now uh, okay no. no it's it's yeah hmm sorry about that okay there wait am i back yay i'm back okay <laughs> i think <laughs> uh, it's actually good because it's kind of slow-mo so maybe if you do it it'll kind of like be a slow-mo shot of how to do it yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, it's working. So I'm going to take the two ends of my rope and just overlap them slightly. And I'm pressing them together. And then I'm going to take um, the two ends that have been pressed together and put them on my palm. There we go. Oh, okay. And now I'm going to um, take like Put my palm down on the my work surface and just roll along um, that piece of the bagel to this is to secure the two ends together and make sure they don't come apart when we're boiling. And it's okay, this is a very big hole, but mm -hmm. there you go. You have a there you go, you have a bagel. And so um I'll do it again. And you can make mini bagels um, if you'd wanted to with um, this recipe as well. And as you're rolling a trick, I think I'm, I'm doing this better than I did last night, is that move along the rope 
just so that you don't get um, a piece of dough that's like really um, a lot thinner than the rest of the bagel. And so you'll get a, uni a more uniform bagel um, if as you're rolling, you kind of move your hand along the, the, the bottom of the bagel. So there you go. I can keep doing that. I'll do, I'll do a few more and then um, Leah will show us how to boil bagels. Um, and one, inter one interesting thing to mention, I think this is true for both New York and Montreal bagels, is you're not going to top your bagels until after they're boiled. Obviously, because yes. if you top them and then you put them in the boiling water, um, everything will fall off. So you're not like, you're not topping just yet. Um, yeah. But the, the process for making a New York bagel is exactly the same, except the hole is a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to take that tip, Kat, of moving my hand along because I think some of my bagels have a have a chunky end and a thinner end because I was rushing last night. So. <laughs> the, the ones I did last night, I, 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 I guess I rushed it too. And they have that weird they looked pretty really good on they looked pretty good on uh, instagram but you know I, I guess i'm my own worst critic and i was thinking about it all day oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like i have to make better bagels <laughs> um should i show the boiling step yes go well, ahead can, okay i'm going to move the my microphone here a little bit so you can see better um, so behind me on my stove i have a um, soup pot filled with about 10 cups of water um, I just eyeballed it and, um, it's at sort of a like rolling simmer. So it's not quite like, a, it's not like a rapid boil, um, but it's, it's simmering. And just again, to remind you guys why we're boiling it, um, it, it kills the, um, the yeast on the surface of the bagel so that when it's baking, um, the outside of the bagel, uh, rises quite a bit less than the inside. So that's how you end up with the nice crust. Um, and the one major difference in the boiling step is in Kat's um, pot, she's put more honey, quite a bit of honey, I believe, yeah. which adds, so, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, no I was just going to say in my 12 cups of water, I put a third of a cup of honey. Okay. So that's quite a bit. And it does add a nice sweetness, which I personally associate with a Montreal bagel, but also is the th one of the things that really um, makes the two different. Um, a New York bagel in the water, I put about a tablespoon for 10 cups of water. I put a tablespoon of um, baking soda, which also helps to kind of shrink the crust and also a tablespoon of salt, um, kind of like salting pasta water. So the bagel absorbs that flavor while they're boiling. Okay, so I have my pre-rolled bagels here and I'm gonna just do like all well, four at a time, and then I'll, I'll do three at a time. So I'm going to plop them in the water. And, and yeah, yeah, go ahead. I was, I was just going to say, it's good to do like three or four at a time, depending on the size of your pot. So you don't want to crowd them because they will puff up a little bit. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yes. How, yeah. How, no, long do you bake, a bit, how long do you boil them for? Um, I boil them for so between 30 and 60 seconds per side. I'm probably going to rush it a little bit so I can just kind of show you guys. Um, I have a like a spider here. This is a, a kitchen spider, but you can use like a slotted spoon or um, whatever to, to get them out so that you can drain them. But I'm going to give them a little flip. Um, <laughs> and I don't know if you agree with this cat, but they look really <laughs> silly when they come out of the pot. Like they kind of have like a wrinkled baby or like, I don't know. Yeah. They're not, they're not beautiful when they come out of the pot. They kind of look like um, al dente pasta or something. I, I, I completely agree with you. And there's always a part of me that despite having made many, many bagels, that panics a little bit. And I'm yeah, like, oh, no. totally. Um, here, I will, I will bring them to the, to the camera so you can see. Um, if I was just doing this, like last night, I let them go a tiny bit longer, but not too much longer. There should be enough to do what I need to do. So you can see here, they're kind of like ugly little wrinkled babies. Not all babies are cute, including bagel babies, but mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> that is going to really kind of make them what you need them to be. So don't fear that step of the process or trust the process anyway. Okay, and so then from here, 
what um there's another kind of difference that i think of i don't know if cat agrees with this but i sometimes do an egg wash on my mm. bagels to get the um the seeds to stick but you don't really have to it just kind of helps so you can decide whether you want to do that or not um but for a new york bagel i have some everything bagel spice here that i got at um a local grocery store trader joe sells it too um I just kind of sprinkle it on like this. You could also do sesame seeds or poppy seeds. Uh, um, and in Montreal, what I think of is instead of kind of sprinkling with a cat, what I think you do is you put the bag, you put the seeds on a plate and you really press the bagels in, I believe on both yeah. sides, right? Exactly. Yeah. And so, like you said before, we don't, ever put an egg wash um and we like coat almost the whole bagel in sesame seeds or coffee seeds yeah so you're getting much more of like a textural crunchy experience with a montreal bagel and you're getting both sides and i most new york mm -hmm. bagels maybe some but most are, i think are just a one side sprinkle so you get the like top that has the the seeds and the bottom that doesn't mm -hmm. um so this is what i'm leaving some plain because my kids will eat them more likely that way <laughs> Um, so you have the everything bagels down here and the planes at the top. And so I'm going to, oh, they smell so good already. Um, <laughs> I'm going to pop them into the oven. My oven's heated to 450, um, which is quite high, but similar to when you're making like pizza at home, you want to have it high, like a high enough heat that you're really going to get a good, uh, browning. So yeah, I'm going to pop exactly. them them in and set my timer oops I did the wrong thing there we go <laughs> um I'm setting my timer for about eight minutes and and then I'll flip the pan for another eight or nine minutes um usually takes you know 16 17 18 minutes at that temperature um what do and you what, was, what temperature oh, are you just okay. asking Oh, sorry. Um, oh, I put them at 425. Okay. And if I can put it higher, I like to put it higher. Like, if, yeah, the recipe yeah. says 425. But if you could go to 450, that's even better. Yeah. Um, and someone was asking if you would put them on it was is it convection? Or is it just regular? Oh, gosh, you can definitely make bagels in a convection oven. But I don't, I don't have a lot of experience working with one. So and my guess yeah. is most things in a convection oven take less time. So I don't know. You could probably Google that pretty easily, like how long, how much less time mm -hmm. at a convection oven. But yeah, I would I, I would err on the side of less time and really just look for a nice brown crust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, exactly. So Kat, I know you are um, boiling your bagels at the moment, but do you also, should we... Uh, I'm just looking at the time. Should we show the finished ones that we made and then maybe open it up to questions and conversation slash debate? <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's do that. And and as we're we're chatting, um, once these are boiled, I will show everyone how I coat them just as a totally. Yeah, just so you see. But yeah, let let's um let's show our bagels. Okay. So I we ate one already, but um here are the baked ones. Let me see yours. Oh, those look so pretty. Thank you. Let's see yours. Well, I can't do the same. Oh, those are so nice. You can see that they're on the small side again, like, because I was trying to go for like the authentic New York small bagel. But if you want to do a larger bagel, you definitely can just divide the dough into eight or nine instead of 12. I love a small bagel. You know, this is, a, this is kind of like, maybe not a secret, but I feel like not many people know that at St. Theater, you can order um, mini bagels and they're perfect for um, like dinner parties where you can like have a little bagel bite with like cream cheese and lox and that's awesome else you want to put on it. It's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like when I eat like a, like a big New York bagel, I'm just like ready for a nap. And these I can like, I can take with my cream cheese and my lox or whatever. And just kind of, it, yeah, it's much better that way. Although I yeah. will tell you guys a secret. I don't like lox. I knew this about you. Wait, yeah. I'm not shocked. It's my yeah. like, it's my Achilles heel <laughs> as, um, as a Jewish food writer. Um, I, I love it as a concept, but I just, it's too fishy for me. 
Um, oh, I also just wanted to quickly share that my, my bagel recipe comes from um, my most recent cookbook, not the one that's coming out, but the one that came out in 2019. And it's called The Jewish Cookbook. Um, and it has a New York bagel and a Montreal bagel and a Jerusalem bagel, which is a totally different animal um, recipe in them. So FYI. Um, and get, get you should definitely, everyone should definitely buy that cookbook because it is a really amazing, comprehensive cookbook all about Jewish food. And um, it really should be in your collection. And you should also buy the um, the um, Wandering Chew merch. I don't know if you guys can see that Kat is wearing an amazing t-shirt that says, I love Montreal bagels. I might have to wear one. I mean, buy one, but I don't know if I can wear it in the streets of New York. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to gift you one when I come to New York in June. <laughs> but yeah, you, you might not want to wear it. Um, in the I'll, I'll brave the streets in my <laughs> Montreal bagel shirt. <laughs> So Leah and Kat, we actually did have an interesting question. I hope you guys can sort of talk through, especially for you, Kat. So people are asking about Toronto bagels because they were saying that the Toronto Jewish community is more sizable than Montreal one, but Montreal has a very special and unique food culture. So could you talk a little bit about the Jewish communities and is there a difference of Toronto bagels versus Montreal bagels? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, the Toronto Jewish community is currently the biggest Jewish community in Canada. I, I forget numbers, right? I, I, you can look that up. But um, at one point, um, and this was before, um, before the 70s, uh, the Montreal had the biggest Jewish community in Canada. Um, and it was in the 70s due to political reasons that many Jews left Quebec and, um, and Montreal because there was a rise in wanting to give uh, primacy to the French language and Anglophones felt very um, not welcome in that environment. So many Jews left and went to Toronto, which is now why um, they have the biggest Jewish community. So I, I'm telling you this because I think um, when you think about Jewish food in Canada, I think Montreal is the, the city that comes to mind automatically. Um, I'm just gonna take my bagels out of the water. Um, and and I and the and so the reason being is because of the fact that we we had the biggest Jewish community in the in the country for so long. So it was really um, the Jew, Jewish food culture in Montreal was really able to take root here. Um, but big like Jewish food culture in Toronto is now really really strong, and there are um, a few bagel shops there. Um, there there is a Montreal bagel shop that sells you know Montreal style bagels. Um, there, I would say the shop that really um, sells what you could call a Toronto bagel is Gripes. It was opened, um, I don't, like, and again, I'm just gonna say, this is not my like, I'm not as an expert in, in Toronto bagels in the way that I'm an expert in Montreal bagels because I, I didn't grow up there um, and I didn't really, I haven't eaten them as much, but, um, but to me, Gripes is that, the place where you can get a Toronto bagel. And I mean, feel free to correct me um, if you disagree. Um, and I, when I ate a Greif's bagel, it almost felt more similar to a, a New York style bagel, um, less sweet than a Montreal style bagel, a little bigger. Um, and, and the crust, I would say, it, it felt like it was in between a Montreal and a New York bagel. So that, that's kind of what I can speak to in regards to Toronto. And I, I hope that um, answered your question a little bit. Um, Kat, there was another great question um, from Rosalind who wants to know, how does Kat keep the dough from getting thinner at the merge spot when she rolls the ends together? And I think this is not just... Mm. This is a question for, for any time you're hand rolling a bagel, right? So Leah, I think you can chime in as well, please. Mm -hmm. Right. So I here I can, well, what I, like I was saying earlier, so when I, you know, connect the two ends of the bagel and start rolling, 
rather than just when you're rolling, just staying in one place, you actually just want to move your hand along, um, along your, your bagel so that and you stick your hand inside as you're yes. rolling, right? Yeah. So here, let me take one of my unbaked bagels here. I'll pretend, let's pretend I just joined the ends, right? So you like join them right here and you place the two joined ends on the palm of your hand, like, yeah, on the palm of your hand right there. You turn your hand over and then you, sorry, it's sticking a little bit. You start to roll. And, but like, like I was saying, rather than just staying right here where the two ends have connected, you want to move your hand along the bagel. You might need to like hold the top a little bit. This is also, I'm kind of re-rolling a rolled bagel, but um, just, yeah, move your head along. And the other, the other thing I would add to that is um, once the bagels are rolled, I don't, maybe, I don't know about Kat's recipe, but in my recipe, they, they rest for 15 to 30 minutes. So they, they puff up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So if you have like a thin spot, it should, I mean, as long as it's not like paper thin, it, it will puff up and then they puff up again in the oven. Um, so thin spots will kind of work themselves out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that Here's a good question. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. I was, I was no, going to no, say an ugly bagel is still a good bagel. So don't worry if the first couple take a while to figure it out. <laughs> and there's nothing like making your own bagels at home. They just taste so good, even at, even at their worst. <laughs> um, what's a, What about a Bialy? My favorite. What is the difference in the recipe process aside from adding the onions in the center? Great question, Deborah. Well, let me open up my book because it's been a while since <laughs> I made one, but it is a similar dough to a New York bagel, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think um, you're, yeah, you're definitely right. It's a lean dough. Yalis, it's a lean dough, yeast, sugar, water, flour, salt. Yeah, it's basically the same dough. Um, the difference is more in how you um, roll it um, and you're making that little like hockey puck with the crater in the middle and, and you're filling it with um, the, you know, uh, onions and poppy seeds or whatever you're filling it with. Um, and the real, so the real difference is the shape and also the fact that it's very hard to slice a cooked Bialy because they are quite a bit thinner, um, kind of similar to a Montreal style bagel. They're like, a little flatter. So when you cut it through, you kind of have like the bottom and then you have this weird little like jaunty hat on top as opposed to like two equal halves. Um, but they're very, very similar. Um, do, you, all... do you boil Bialis? Oh, good question. Oh, no, you don't. Mm -mm. You don't. So it's more like a pizza dough or like a flatbread. Um, yeah, thank you for mentioning that. Duh, you don't boil them. Here's a here's a question for you both about your recipes. Do you use high gluten flour? Yeah, my recipe calls for a bread flour. Um, these were secretly made with all purpose because I didn't have it and I didn't want to run to the store. They're still going to be delicious, but they're going to have a little less of the like bagel chew that you're used to. So a, a high a bread flour does make uh, for a New York bagel makes a superior bagel. Um, we actually use all purpose flour in our um in our recipe i know that at st theater and fairmount that they, they i believe they no they use a bread flour when we were developing this recipe it was for um a canadian cookbook called uh feast and edible road trip and so they were they wanted us to contribute a montreal bagel recipe and we wanted to make it easy for everyone to make and so we just we decided to make it with an all-purpose um but i Montreal bagels are not chewy in the way that New York bagels are. So I feel very uh, confident in using an all purpose for. Yeah. Purposes. And also with, with the adding of the egg and the oil and more sweetness, like you are really getting, it's kind of a different vibe. I feel like all purpose works better for a Montreal bagel. Yeah. Well, we have a little bit of time left so far. Everyone's been really well behaved in the in the comments. But if there's additional <laughs> questions or anyone who wants to chime in on if, why they feel strongly about one bagel or the other, now is kind of the time to do it. I also saw somebody was sort of scorekeeping on a sports team named the Leafs. The, the Toronto, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs are a hockey team. 
<laughs> well, one, one thing I didn't mention about Montreal bagel culture, which I think is important, is um, both St. Vieter and Fairmount are open 24 hours a day. So I think like something you have to do when you come to Montreal is, you know, go out for drinks and bars here are open till three in the morning, which poof, too late for me. I go to bed at like 9 30 10 o'clock nowadays <laughs> um but in my yeah in my youth um you know i'd go out with friends and then once we on our way home because i lived a block away from saint Peter, i would pick up hot fresh bagels at like two in the morning and eat them on the way home and when you walk up next to both saint Peter and fairmount you'll see that the sidewalk is just covered, littered with sesame seeds because <laughs> people, and, and like I was saying, you're always getting a hot, fresh bagel. And so whether you're like taking them home to your family or just like standing outside the shop and eating a bagel, these sesame seeds are just falling off the bagel because they're coated um, with so many seeds. Yeah. Um, Grace wants to know, for each of you, what's your favorite way to enjoy a bagel? Like what flavor bagel and what like mm. schmear and toppings do you like? Leah, um, do you want to start? <laughs> sure. Well, I also just want to say, like, I kind of alluded to this before, but the New York bagel has been kind of defamed or defiled over the years. There's a lot of really bad bagels in New York, which is in some ways, um, a testament to how ubiquitous they are, right? Like you can get them in any deli, any everywhere, like not just a Jewish deli, but any like bodega. Um, and so a lot of them are really bad. So it's really worth seeking out the good places. Um, and, you know, like Russ and Daughters makes really good bagels. Um, mm. uh, there's Bagel Hole in, in Brooklyn, which is really lovely. So you, if you can, you can Google like best bagels in New York and find lists. Um, there are really good still New York bagels to be had, but because there are so, like in Mont Montreal, there's two places basically that you go and in New York, they're everywhere. So you have to kind of do a little more separating the, the cream from the milk or whatever, the wheat from the <laughs> whatever. Um, I, my favorite way to have a bagel is a sesame bagel or an everything bagel with cream cheese, a really good slice of red on, of red tomato red onion, capers, um, lemon zest, and black pepper. That's, mm. that's my vibe. Because I don't do, I don't really do lox, as I mentioned. So I want to have that like sharp, creamy, bright flavor. But capers, capers are key. Oh, I agree with you. You need capers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, Kat? Yeah, so I also... Um, I love a sesame bagel. I also, I, I mean, I like sesame or poppy. Um, and I usually get them from St. Vieter. Um, I will eat a Fairmount bagel though. Don't, <laughs> I, I will never turn down a Fairmount bagel. Um, and if it's really fresh, um, if I'm going to the shop and buying it, then sometimes I will I'll, like stand outside the shop or rush home and just eat it, like rip it apart and dip it right into the container of I, I really like this salmon spread it's like lox that's like mixed with mayo it's like a salmon dip it's like salty and creamy from the mayo and it's amazing and I will eat a whole container of it and so I'll like <laughs> dip my bagels into it but if I'm eating them you know um not just broken like ripped apart and dipped into something um I will like slice them and put cream cheese I and everyone can read about this but my favorite cream cheese, Liberté, was um, discontinued last summer. I wrote about it for the Nosher, so please go go read that article. Um, it was a travesty. Um, so I would have, you know, put Liberté because it's like it was amazing, like tangy, light, not too dense of a cream cheese. Um, now I'll use Labne and put some capers and lox and thinly sliced red onions um, on my bagel. That is a big, also, that is a, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I also really love white fish and it's like not really like white fish, um, like spread anyways. It's not something you really get here. So that was going to say that is a big difference. Like you would never tear and dip a New York bagel. You would always slice and spread, but mm -hmm. because Montreal bagels are smaller and a little flatter, like they're a perfect snacking bagel. That's what I love them for. Like when we go to Montreal, we get like a dozen bagels to bring home and we end up just like ripping at least three of them 
you know, to shreds and eating them on the way home. Um, but yeah. It, yeah. You have, you have to do that. And, and when you buy them, like the day of, you don't toast the bagels. Like you'll, you'll cut, you'll either, like I said, rip them apart or cut them and just eat them as is. And then if they're a day old, then that's when you'll toast them. I don't know about what you do, Leah, if it's the same thing. Yeah, that's the same. That's the same. I wouldn't toast a, a fresh day of bagel, yeah. but anything after that, mm. I don't, people get up in arms about toasting New York bagels. I'm like it, stale bread is still bread. So like the next day you can toast it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you toast your bagel, let it cool down before you put your cream cheese on, or otherwise you get that like gross puddle of like melted cream cheese. And that's not yummy for anybody. Pro tip. <laughs> yes. Here's a really great question that I, I love talking about, so I can't wait to hear your answer. Leah, um, is the idea that New York City water is an important part of New York bagel true or not true? I think that is um, something that New Yorkers like to feel superior about. Um, New York does have wonderful water. It comes from, I think, the Catskills, and it's very fresh and very clean. And I know there's stories of like, bagel makers who moved to Florida and then would like drive up to New York and truck water down to boil their bagels. But I, I just don't, I've heard the same thing about like pizza being good in New York because of the water. I think, I think it's just because there was bagel expertise here um, and it was a craft and people knew how to do it well. I think you can make a delicious New York bagel in Wichita, Kansas, you know. So. Or in Montreal. Or in Montreal. Yes, you could. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's one of those just like fun urban legends that if you want to keep, you know, saying it and there's no harm, it's because New York is the best, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think this is a, um, a worthy question. Tempty cream cheese versus Philadelphia cream cheese. Um, I, Kat, I don't know if you have, I don't know what brand you have. So Tempty is just, is like a whipped there's a whipped cream cheese. I feel like it's like you have to have it for Passover because it spreads more easily on matzah and yes. Philadelphia is more like a traditional cream cheese. So Leah, what do you, what do you say? Well, I happen to have Tempty in my fridge from Passover. Um, I personally love Tempty on matzah and prefer Philadelphia on a bagel because I want something more substantive. Um, but either is fine. I'll probably eat these bagels with Tempty because I have it. I'm I'm gonna have to try that when I come in like come to visit in June because it's the second time this week that somebody mentions it to me. It's definitely not as good as Liberté was, but it's pretty good. <laughs> um, do you ever use whole wheat flour in your bagel recipes? Um, I don't know that I've ever made whole wheat bagels. I think if you're going to try it at home, I would start doing half and half half yeah. bread flour, half whole wheat, um, and see how it goes. But That's I mean, what I would say too. Yeah. yeah, there certainly are whole wheat bagels at bagel shops. So I don't see why, why not? Yeah. Same in Montreal, there are whole wheat bagels. Um, but I think, yeah, when you're using another flour, you always want to kind of use less of it and like cut it with bread or all purpose. Someone said whole wheat bagels are yuck. Um, <laughs> I, I do make whole wheat bagels and I agree with what Leah says. So if you're going to experiment with adding whole wheat flour, I wouldn't use a hundred percent whole wheat. It would be too dense. I would use a third or a half if you're, if you're asking, um, you guys have been very tame. I don't see a whole mm -hmm. lot of, of I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Um, I mean, the truth is they're really apples and oranges, right? Like they both, they have the same, um, like uh, ancestor, but they really just became two different things. And when I'm in Montreal, if I don't eat a bagel from Montreal, it's not a trip. And, yeah. you know, it like, I, but I still have my, if I was going to pick between the two, I would pick New York, but I also really love Montreal bagels. So and I, yeah, I feel the same way. And I, I mean, I ultimately think it comes down to like what you grew up with and what you, cause it, it's about comfort and nostalgia and like just being able to have that bagel that you ate as a kid. And, but I, similarly, I, when I come visit New York, I, um, I have to have a few bagels. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was really so fun. And I feel like I learned so much about bagels from you guys. I hope that, um, everyone here did. If there's any last questions, 
speak now or forever hold your peace. There'll be an email that comes out with a recording of tonight as well as the recipes um, from Kat and from Leah. Um, um, so thank you both again so much for giving your time and sharing your expertise. This was so fun to watch you both and talk about the differences. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> thank you everybody so much. Have a great night. Look out for the follow-up email. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye.